want to talk about is a baker cyst. So I think it's important that we're in the apartment today because a lot of times you're going home to your house and you're trying to manage this on your own. First and foremost, baker cysts are not something that's trying to attack you. A baker cyst is actually a bursa. So that's something that your body forms itself almost as a barrier. So if we're getting a lot of friction from tendons um, along the knee joint, that bursa will start to develop and sometimes fill with fluid to just protect you a little bit. Oftentimes when we have fluid that's building up in the knee, what you'll also get is some of that fluid going into the bursa to reduce some of the pressure at the knee. So we're gonna go to the RICE method, right? Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. The idea is to reduce the inflammation in the swelling to allow that knee to feel better and move better. Most people, they get a little bit confused by compression. So <clears throat> something that I tend to use when I'm in the clinic is just this little compression wrap. Okay, and this is something you can get at a lot of different places now. It's just the inner um, part of a bike tire. So Rogue Fitness will sell them. You can get them all over Amazon. What I like to do with this, so let's say I have a little Baker cyst behind here. There's some swelling. The idea when we wrap this behind the knee is that we're gonna compress that fluid and try to push it up through the lymphatic system and get it out of there. All right, when your muscles pump and squeeze, what they're actually doing is they're squeezing some of these areas, right? They're squeezing along the lymphatic vessels and they're pumping that fluid back up out. That's why motion is good, right? I'm very careful with the rice or the rest piece because I don't want you just sitting down, I want you moving too. That'll help with the swelling. So we take the band, we start below the knee, we wrap, we take about, right? This would be about 100% tension. We cut back a little bit to 50. Come around again, about 50% tension. 50% tension. And we keep coming around above the knee. I'll be honest, this doesn't feel great and we won't have it on there for a long time. If you want to keep it on a little bit longer, just don't put as much tension, maybe like 20%. All right, so once it's above the knee, I'll hook it off here. All right, and then this is the elevation part. Another mistake is we need the knee to be above the heart. So you can lay them down from here. And then from this position, you can try to work on just straightening the knee. What I'd say is just spend a few minutes here. You don't want the feet going numb or anything like this. But this will actually help a lot with getting some of that fluid out, at least for a short period of time. Okay, so after you've done some of the compression, the next part is looking at that knee range of motion. So a lot of times, the way to identify a Baker cyst, right, <clears throat> is you can feel behind the knee and you'll feel a little bit of firmness, especially when you straighten the knee. When you flex the knee, a lot of times you'll feel that area soften. If there's a lot of swelling, you might not feel that. It might stay stiff, okay? But what we want to do is we want to restore some of this knee range of motion. So if you're trying to push down and you can't get that knee flat to the ground, this is what we need to work on. In order to do that, we gotta start creating some length in these hamstring muscles and in the calf muscles that are crossing the knee. All right, one way to do that is you can just do a stretch where you hit both of them, right? So hanging out here, stretching the calf, pushing the knee down, I'm trying to squeeze that quad to assist this motion. And I can hang out here for about 20, 30 seconds and then relax, same thing, about 20, 30 seconds and then relax. We'll do that for a few repetitions. The next thing you can do to try to get that knee a little bit straighter is we start rolling some of these muscles. All right, so we got a lot of different options here, different balls, lacrosse ball, and we have foam roller. So if you have a foam roller, go through and start rolling these muscles. Find spots that are tender, right? So I'm a little tender on the outside of this quad, so I'll hang out here for at least two minutes just working into my pain threshold. I don't want to cry, but I don't want it to feel super comfortable. Another benefit of doing this is a lot of times trigger points in the hamstring and the calf muscles will actually refer pain to the back of the knee. So what you think is pain from a little bit of swelling behind the knee might actually be referred pain from the muscle, okay? So attack the calf, attack the hamstring, work on getting the knee straight. 